Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. From health screenings to leadership programs, Street Level Health Project works hard to empower immigrant communities. Laura Lopez and Kim Barstow from Street Level Health Project join me now. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you for inviting us. So tell me, how did this get started? Uh, well, we started with the nurses and some students from El College going to the street and talking to the day laborers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the workers, they have a lot of different injuries, correct, and didn't know how to navigate the system. So a lot of them from Guatemala, Mexico. So basically, we're trying to give a refer to the people to get some medical care access. So that's how we started being in the street with the workers and trying to help it to understand how the system works, no matter where we're coming from or what we have, you know. So there was obviously a real need in the Bay Area. What is the need like here? Well, the, in the Bay Area, we have a lot of different needs from the community, especially if you think about the immigrant community. You know, you don't speak the language, you don't know the system, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't have family. So you can think from health, it's like to see the doctor. Many of our communities, sometimes they've never been to the doctor before. So that's the way how we're helping them to having a clinic and support. For food, you know, many of them sometimes they don't have a job. So have that's a way to also creating and having some food. And at the same time, you no, know, you rise. Now, you know, like as an immigrant, you sometimes you feel like you don't have the right to anything. And that's a thing. So there's the three big components that we see. But I don't know if you want to add anything else. Not just people feeling like isolated and lonely. A lot of times people don't even come for a specific, you know, Thing that they need from us but just come to sit and have a cup of coffee and talk to someone and not feel as isolated and alone. Mm -hmm. That they have somebody on mm -hmm. their side and mm -hmm. someone there with any issues. You, you talked about the health services. There's a medical clinic three times a week. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we have, um, when we started, we used to be referring only. Uh, the problem was that it was too long for people to get access to medical care or sometimes they have to sign up and become a member to any community clinics and that take a long time. Mm -hmm. And the need was now sometimes they have poison oak, if, especially if you're day laborers the way where you work or you have diabetes you don't have to wait so long so the way how we started is having a doctor giving medication give it the treatment but in meanwhile we're helping that person to become member to any community clinic or hospital that we need to be so that was the model but in the same time providing all the type of, of services like a mental health like nutrition like case management mm -hmm. all this big component to help that person nutrition is really important as well mm -hmm. Correct. and that's part of the uh, the food part so tell me about, uh, do you have a lot of volunteers that come up to help? Yeah, I mean, we could not run our services without volunteers. Every yeah. single program and service that we have available runs based on volunteers. If we didn't have them, we would have to mm -hmm. drastically cut what we do or not see as many people. Um, we have things that require you know, more intense commitment and training from volunteering in our health clinic to people who come, community members who participate in our food program and also our volunteers to help make it run smoothly. So there's just a wide range of opportunities. People who come once a year to help out at our Christmas party. So there's just a lot of different ways for people to plug in, but we couldn't do anything we do without volunteers. Let's talk about the, uh, the Christmas in community. Uh, is that the big, the big event of the year? It is the bigger one. Actually, we start almost like eight years ago, and we start with only with the day labor, 75 workers sitting, and we have like um, a great food, people sitting, ice cream like dessert, and having a little present for them. Since all this year, now it's a huge event that we have. And we used to start, like I said, maybe a small room, and now we have to rent in, um, a school, and we have around 400 to 500 people from the community to come, where we have toys, food, jackets, performers, people dancing. It's like a place that you feel welcome, like people like, you know, in family, because sure. sometimes your family is not with you, and this is a place, it doesn't matter where you're from or what mm -hmm. color, you know, what color of your skin. We have people from not only Spanish speakers, we have African American, we have Asian community, everybody is together to celebrate life, to celebrate that we are here. How many people do you serve? Well, annually we serve, a um, we can say, and duplicating in the whole organization, like over 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what we're having. But in our clinic, it's another big population that we're serving too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have around um, 900 different people that will come to our clinic in the year. And some people come one time to you know, deal with an ear infection. And some people come regularly because they've just got a new diabetes diagnosis. So they need to come regularly to get stabilized until we can get them into the community health system. So it's a wide range. And here are some of the pictures uh, we're showing here, maybe some of the, the clinic checkups. Yeah, yeah, this is one of our intake rooms and exam rooms. And I guess the exciting part of you see when we, when you come to street level it's not a typical place like um, like a clinic or office space. It's a okay. place that you we don't have really we have a high ceiling, it's very loud, so we people talking and it's my like the clinic, people are not dressed up with clothes as a doctor, you know, like everybody is the same. We just we're trying to look 
the same people, so sure. we don't have a difference. So that's, I think, so what create also wellness in our community. They don't feel intimidated in building that trust. That's how we do in our clinics. How can people that need your services access your services? Most people okay. just walk in through the front door. They just, they've heard <laughs> we about it. We have people who see a sign on our front door or they're, the person next to them on the bus says, hey, you have a problem? You go to the 25th International in front of Pollo Loco and people come <laughs> down. <laughs> and so it's all word of mouth. Occasionally we get phone calls, but mostly people just, yeah, walk in our front door and say, hi, I have this problem. What, you know, and what can you help me with? And the other thing I think, so when we started with a lot of Oakland, Alameda County, it's been growing. So we've been seeing a lot of demand from Contra Costa County. We have people from coming all the way from Sacramento. We have, because we have interpreters. We have a, in our center, a Mongolian person who helped to navigate. We have a mom speaking, who speaks indigenous language from Guatemala. And our doctors speak Nepali, so we also see refugees. So our clinic is very diversified, and we're trying to help, you know. No, we cannot say that we have all the language capacity, but we have a lot of partners. We partner. I think so one of the greatest things at street level is we don't feel that we have to do alone. It's about a collaboration, a partnership from legal place savers, from public health department, from hospital, from clinic, from everywhere. I think so that's the way how you, you're supposed to work and with a food bank, you know. Well, you're doing great work. Thanks so much for coming on the show and telling us all about it. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you, and have fun with the Christmas events. <laughs> yes, Sounds like a lot of fun. For more information on Street Level Health Project's services, please log on to streetlevelhealth.org. Again, that's streetlevelhealth.org. Coming up, we'll hear about education programs and upcoming performances at Theater Works. We'll be right back.